What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Before we get started, don't forget that this podcast is sponsored by Promo Palace LLC at promopalace.biz. You need online marketing promotions for your music, your product, your brand, or your service. Please check out promopalace.biz. Also, if you're a dog lover and a cat lover and you like t-shirts, hoodies, and sweatshirts, please check out New Litter Apparel at newlitter.com. That's N-E-W-L-I-T-T-E-R.com. Also, last but not least, I got to shout out dizzlebrand.com just add ice dizzle on ice step into the future do you dizzle i do dizzlebrand.com check them out follow them on instagram facebook uh youtube tiktok twitter and more i actually run the tiktok and facebook for dizzle so definitely follow those and also check out they got about a dozen recipes on there that you could pretty much um go over um I think before I get into some topics, there was no games, but I'm going to go over my power picks, which I think my power picks are about to change now um, due to Chris Paul's out for six to eight weeks, and I'm about to get into that after I get my power picks. So I'm going to go with number one. I'm going with, I have to do it just because Chris Paul's out. I got to go with... The Golden State Warriors, back at number one. Um, Number two, I got to go with the Miami Heat. Number three, I got to go. I'm going to go with the Phoenix Suns. Number four, I'm going to go to Chicago Bulls. And number five, I'm going Philadelphia 76ers. I did have the Grizzlies in my power picks, but they're just like, I don't know. They're just under the radar right now. And they've, I mean, they're 8 2 in the last 10. But uh, I don't know. I think something's still missing. Well, Chris Paul's out for six to eight weeks. Uh, this ain't good. Phoenix is probably going to drop a lot of games, a lot of games. I understand they got Cameron Payne and Alfred uh, Payton, I think his last name is, but these guys ain't going to be able to fill the void that Chris Paul's leaving for six to eight weeks. They're not going to be able to replace Chris Paul. So Devin Booker's going to have to do more facilitating, more handling the ball. Uh, I think Phoenix is definitely going to lose a lot of games in the next six to eight weeks without Chris Paul, especially if Aiton or anybody else isn't healthy. Uh, yeah, so uh, to be honest with you, I can see Phoenix moving down to number three. Maybe number three. Yeah, I can see Golden's definitely number two. I mean, they got a seven-game lead on the third seed. But they could easily, like, just like the Nets, easily lose nine, ten straight games. Especially depending on how tough their schedule is. I mean, because we think about they weren't even a playoff team before Chris Paul got there. I repeat, they were not even a playoff team before Chris Paul got there. I know people can talk about what they did in the bubble, but they weren't even a playoff team before Chris Paul got there. So there's that. And they definitely aren't coming out the West without Chris Paul. So Chris Paul being out six to eight weeks, I mean, whew, I don't even have any weeks left in the, the, the season. I mean, that's that's a month and a half, two months. That only might be that much time left in the season. This This could really be... This could be a make or break moment for the Sun season. This really could be a make or break moment. This could break their season or it could make it Chris Paul, you know, gets a little bit of rest for six to eight weeks. If they still, as long as they hold on to the top three slots, they should still be good to go. 
I don't see him falling past three. I don't see him falling past going down to four. I mean, they literally got a um, – hey, what is it? A 12-game lead on the fourth seed. I don't see them falling back that far, especially since the Utah Jazz. Utah Jazz are not really that good anyways. They're just – they're just subpar. I mean, they're just right in the middle. They they still can't – Jazz still can't get over the hump, man. They still can't get over the hump. And Denver is supposed to have Porter and Murray coming back this season sometime. And so that could actually propel them up a couple slots. So, yeah, this Chris Paul being out, this could be a make or break for the Suns, man. I mean, this season could be over because of this. You know, because he could come back and still be hurt. He might not fully be healed when he comes back and still be hurt. Uh, Goran Dragic to the Nets. This really is backup insurance for Kyrie. Because I know this is what New Jersey and Kyrie's doing. They got their fingers crossed hoping Mayor Eric Adams changes the rules. But I can tell you right now. He ain't changing the rules for no fucking Kyrie Irving. For one freaking person, man. It's already It already sets a bad precedent that Kyrie Irving is working part-time and he's making millions. You show me another... Pl- Please tell me another person on the planet that's making millions working part-time. You're not going to find it. It sets a bad precedent. It really does, man. You talk about privilege. I don't want to hear about pr- white privilege coming from Kyrie Irving's mouth. Ever in my entire life, I don't want to hear white privilege coming out of Kyrie Irving's mouth. Kyrie Irving is more privileged than any white man on the planet right now. He's a freaking millionaire. Get, he's getting paid millions of dollars to work part-time. You show me another job on the planet where you can work for part-time and get full-time wages. He's getting full-time wages to work part-time. I don't want to hear white privilege ever coming out of Kyrie Irving's mouth. If he does, he's the biggest fucking hypocrite on the planet. And I do agree with his stance on the vaccine. You know, I do agree with his stance on the vaccine because I'm not vaccinated. I don't plan on getting vaccinated no time soon. Um... I don't necessarily trust it because, let's see, why Why don't I trust it? Um, you, first of all, the government can't be trusted because you're hiding how it got out there in the first place. They won't, they're hiding how COVID spread in the first place, where it come from. They won't put that info, information out there. So they're lying about that. You know, then it's been rushed out. Then, in my opinion, it's not really a vaccine. Because it doesn't do what standard vaccines do. It doesn't stop you from getting COVID. It doesn't stop you from spreading. So vaccinated or not, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. You know? So that's all tragic to the Nets is insurance and backup because Kyrie Irving might not be able to play full-time come playoff time. He's not playing full-time right now. It already sets a bad precedent. I don't know why the NBA hasn't stepped in and shut that down. They need to put some rule in place that you can't that that should not be allowed. And you can't tell me that all the New Jersey Nets players are happy. They're all happy. Go happy about Kyrie Irving playing part time and making more money than them. I guarantee, guarantee there's some people on that team that feel very salty about that, and they should. They should. And that's another thing. I don't want to hear about Kyrie Irving talking about equality in the workplace either. When you literally are working part-time and getting paid more than other people. I don't want to hear Kyrie Irving talking about white privilege or equality in the workplace. Because if he does, he's a freaking hypocrite. And somebody needs to slap the taste out of his mouth. Because the only, but like I said, I do agree with his vaccination stance. You know what I'm saying? But if I ever hear white privilege come out of his mouth or ever hear quality in the workplace come out of his mouth, he's the biggest freaking hypocrite on the planet if he ever says that. He has no room, no room to speak whatsoever about privilege or equality in the workplace. 
which leads me, um, the vaccination thing leads me into the John Stockton thing, which I didn't know about this. John Stockton apparently took a stance. Um, I don't know if anybody else has talked about it, but I'm going to talk about it. So John Stockton took a stance that I guess he lost his season tickets in Utah jazz games because he took a stance that he's not going to wear, get vaccinated or whatsoever because he says that athletes have died from the vaccination. Now, people are saying there's no proof of that, but who knows? There's, I guarantee there's proof of where COVID started, where this COVID started, but they sure as hell ain't going to put that out there. So this idea that we're supposed to trust the government when it comes to proof is horseshit, bullshit, bogus, made up, imaginary, fairy tale, make believe, ideas and thoughts. You can't trust the government when it comes to proof. The government hides more information than anybody. And they always throw this national security bullshit on times national security. Who the hell are you to dictate what's national security? Who do you who the hell are you to dictate what the American people should and shouldn't know? And I sure as hell don't trust that, you know, I don't trust their take on how COVID started, where it came from. This clearly started in a lab. This clearly started in a lab. They clearly have proof of it that they're hiding and that they won't put out there. And you want me to trust any proof that they might have, might not have or might have about people dying from the vaccine or af- if any athletes have died from the vaccine or anything of that nature? And uh, he didn't necessarily say they were famous athletes or or pro athletes. They could have been um, – minor league athletes or they could have been D, you know, G league athletes or triple A athletes or who knows, you know, um, he didn't really provide no proof, but this idea that they rush a vaccine out there and people have not died from it yet. I don't believe that horseshit one bit. I don't believe that one bit. You know why? Because every freaking vaccine on the planet has side effects. And every vaccine on the planet damn near has probably killed somebody because of its side effects. So, um, I mean, even though, I'm not going to lie, I think John Stockton went out on a limb with the information he put out there. But at the same time, how can you, you can't trust the government? We talk about proof. There's no proof of that. Well, we don't know that there's no proof of that because the government hides any kind of proof from the common people. Anybody that says the government isn't hiding proof is a cold is is a bold faced liar. The government is hiding proof of all types of stuff from Americans, civilians. Every single day of our lives. I guarantee there's a new there's new information that comes out every day that the government hides from us. Proof of all types of things that they hide from us. So when we talk about proof, there's no proof of that. But that's because the government doesn't it's not like the government's transparent. It's not like they to clo- they didn't close, you know, put out every form of proof out there. No, they hide it. They keep it to themselves. They don't put it out there. <clears throat> um, all right, so let me get into this Elon Omar. I finally, finally agree with something she said. She finally took a stance that I think a lot of people could agree with. She got behind. Well, she I don't know if she ne- necessarily took a stance of supporting the truckers, but she supported the business business owners that donated money to the truckers that somebody ha- used. Uh, the government basically had somebody hack the information of the donors so they could harass them. She supported people that made the donations. And she supported the fact that they were being harassed by Canadian government and their information was hacked and put out there. And yes, like government intimidating people, like hacking stuff and 
put your information out there to, to so people could threaten your life and intimidate you. Oh yeah, that's 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 not a government at all. That's that's a dictatorship. That's a bunch of tyrants. You know, and and, and I'm gonna tell you right now, man. If, if America decides to follow the lead of Canada, we're gonna have a civil war. I, I believe in my lifetime we're going to have another civil war anyways. I strongly believe before I die, America will go into a civil war. Canada looked like it's going into a civil war thanks to this tyrant named Justin Trudeau who basically wants to turn Canada into China, a communist dictatorship, you know, because apparently China's economy is blowing up and booming, but I guarantee, I guarantee only a small portion of Chinese are getting rich off the Chinese economy booming. Uh, first of all, Chinese doesn't have freedom of press, so they're hiding every freaking thing they can do if they can. They can't be trusted on anything they say or do. There is no just um, free um, business opportunities. You can't just... People in China can't just, you know, they don't got the opportunity to be whatever they want to be. They can't just open businesses and start new businesses. And there's no, you know, there's no opportunity like America has. America is known for being the land of opportunity. China is the exact opposite of that. They're not letting, giving massive opportunity to people. It's not all these Chinese people just start their own businesses like me and working from their home and doing, you know, just building business from scratch and doing that. They don't even got social media really in China. They can't even really, that's the thing, you know, the, the freaking social media, anything social media is controlled by China. China controls all the social media. Government doesn't control social media in America as much as they wish they could and, and they probably eventually will because social media is crossing some lines that are borderline illegal and criminal, you know, as far, especially when you're talking about, you know, First Amendments and Second Amendments and stuff like that, you know, like social media is definitely violating, is definitely um, is doing things against people's amendments. And, and that's the thing. Your social media terms of service is, don't overpower my amendments. You're t- I got terms of service on my website. My terms of service on my website are don't hold no weight over the freaking amendments. That's national law. Terms of service is just the rules of a one business, you know. So this idea that your terms of services, you know, overpower my amendments is is is. Cl- Complete bullshit and horseshit. So I do agree with Elon Omar. It's about time she comes up and um, speaks on something that makes sense and that I agree with. And uh, maybe she's not as bad as the next person we're going to get into, AOC. This is my last topic of the day. AOC compared to Jesus. I know a lot of people got offended by this. I didn't get offended by it. You know why? First of all, Jesus is make believe, fairy tales. So she got compared to a fairy tale story. It goes to show you what people really think about AOC. They don't take her serious. She's not for real. You know, nobody nobody takes her for serious whatsoever. And people that get offended because she's compared to Jesus, who cares? They're both fake. They're both fake as fuck. They're both phony as fuck. So it, it's that's the perfect comparison, to be honest with you. Comparing AOC to Jesus is the perfect comparison. Because they're both fake and phony as fuck. Make believe. Imaginary, bogus, fairy tale, horseshit, bullshit. So all those things I named, they describe AOC. Horseshit, bullshit. Fairy tales, like her views, they're they're not even realistic. 
they're not even reality. Her views are not reality. So she lives in a fairy tale fucking world. Her attitude is shitty. So she's full of shit, bullshit, horseshit. She's phony. She's fake as fuck. Because she's a freaking hypocrite. She's a freaking hypocrite. And every time somebody attacks her, you know, she lies through her freaking teeth. You know, they only attack me because they want to have sex with me. Shut up, you stupid ass bitch. You dumb ass, stupid ass bitch. No, they, they, they criticize you and attack you because you're a fucking hypocrite. Because you're not living in the fucking real world. You're living in a fairy tale, made up, imaginary, make believe fucking world. You're and you're phony and a fake, like Jesus Christ. First of all, you know how you know Jesus Christ is fake and phony? Because if he was real, the motherfucker wouldn't have been white. He would his skin wouldn't have been white. He wouldn't have been no white boy. That's how you know Jesus Christ is, is fake and phony. Because Jesus Christ wouldn't have been a motherfucking white boy. He wouldn't have been a honky or a cracker. You know why? Because there wasn't none in that area. There wasn't none in that region. The the people from the region where Jesus Christ was from are African or Arab. They're not white. That's one reason you know it. And, and the Bible is just a book on, you know, it's just how to morally live your life right. <laughs> How to be a decent, honest, good human being. That's the only things I do agree with the Bible. It does tell you how to, teaches you how to be a decent, good, honest human being. But some things in there are just so, so off. Like, any real God wouldn't have told you, would not tell you to not work on Sunday. He would not tell you to not make money and take care of your family. He wouldn't tell, any real God wouldn't tell you, Hey, work five days a week, but don't work Saturday or especially Sunday so you don't make enough money just so you could just get by and you could struggle. No real God would tell you to just make enough money to get by or make enough money just to struggle. Any real God would tell you make all the freaking money you can to take care of your family. And if any real God didn't know what economy was coming when he created man, then he ain't a God. He's a complete idiot, a moron, a jackass, to be honest with you, you know. And any God, any real God wouldn't tell you to stand there and let somebody stab you to death. You know, tells you. Just to let somebody, if somebody smacks the cheek, let them smack the other. Yeah, any real guy wouldn't tell you to just be a complete idiot, stand there and let somebody just assault you and possibly take your life and threaten, you know. No real guy would do that. A real guy would tell you to defend yourself. So, you know, the Bible is just about morals, how to just try to be a good, decent, honest human being. But some of it is a little too overblown, perpetuated, out of hand. Like, it's not even realistic of how things would really play out in the real world. This idea that anybody's just going to let somebody walk up to them in just public, smack them in the face, and they're just going to say, oh, hold on a second. Let me turn out the cheek for you. There you go. That doesn't even, it's not even real reality. It's not even realistic, you know. So the Bible is just, it's just fairy tales and stories, Um. The only reason the Bible is, is so big, it's the first actual book that people could buy. I repeat, the Bible is the first actual book that everybody in the world could buy. That's why the Bible is so big. It's the first book that mankind started to sell. So I don't get offended by AOC could be compared to Jesus because it fits right. They're both phony and fake as fuck. 
She's phony. She's fake. So is Jesus. It's perfect. It's a perfect comparison if you ask me. It's perfect comparison. And yes, there's going to be some Christians get offended, but go ahead and get offended because you have no proof of Jesus Christ or a God. You have no proof. There's no proof that there is a God out there. And until I see some actual proof, it is just assumptions. It's just opinions. And I'll go off opinions. I'll go off facts. So, yeah, LC compared to Jesus. At first, I was like, what the fuck? Then I thought about, hold up. I don't even believe in Jesus. Jesus is fake and phony. Wait, so is AOC. Perfect comparison. Perfect comparison. So whoever compared them, they did a great job. You compared a fake and phony person with another fake and phony person. Great job. Cisco and Eber gives you two thumbs up. Well, I guess that's it for this show. This was episode 113 of the Paul Pickett Podcast. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't forget the video version goes to YouTube, Facebook, Rumble, and Instagram. Also, the audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Slacker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and much more. Or you could just Google the Paul Pickett Podcast. You see the name right above me, you know. You probably could just Google Paul Pickett, and that, I'm pretty sure plenty of stuff will come up on that. But Paul Pickett Podcast, you'll get tons and tons of links, pages and pages of links, press release, blogs, uh, streaming links, social media links, whatever. Check me out on any of them. Follow, follow me on any of them. Um, appreciate any support. You know, Share the videos, comment the videos, like the videos. Um, any engagement is accepted. Even if you want to put hate comments, it's accepted. You know why? All engagement is good engagement. I repeat, all engagement is good engagement. Like they said, there's so, no such thing as bad press. All press is good press. <laughs> you know, because it's all promotion. Either way you look at it, it's all promotion. You know, you're not going to please everybody. Everybody, that's the thing. If you don't have haters, you don't have haters, then you're not doing nothing. You're doing nothing right. You must not be doing anything right. You have not, not done zero things right in the business world or the podcaster world or the entertainment world if you don't have haters. If you have zero haters, you're doing everything wrong. If you got tons and tons of haters, you trust me, you're doing everything right because that means you got tons and tons of fans. Because people don't have tons and tons of haters unless they got a ton of fans. So that's that. Yeah, so thank you for tuning in. My name is Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. The Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, and more. Um, before I go, don't forget this podcast is sponsored by Promo Palace LLC at promopalace.biz. If you need online marketing promotions for your music, your product, your brand, or your service, please check out promopalace.biz. Also, if you're a dog lover, cat lover like me, you like t-shirts, hoodies, or sweatshirts, and even if you're an animal lover, animal rights activist, please check out New Litter Apparel at newlitter.com. That's N-E-W-L-I-T-T-E-R.com. We even got, um kicks on there yes they do come from china um also we got um dog apparel like dog bandanas dog tags and i think we added dog bowls too i i can't remember i gotta check i got so much going on i i have to i should be an octopus right now i need more arms um also don't forget uh last but not least for shizzle i gotta shout out dizzlebrand.com just add ice Dizzle on ice. Step into the future. Do you dizzle? I do. Follow them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and more. And, of course, I run the TikTok and their Facebook profile page and their Facebook fan page 
while the owners run the Instagram and nobody's really running Twitter because Twitter sucks. Twitter sucks. Twitter is bullshit right now. All right, well, once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Just hit the 30-minute mark. This is a 30-minute episode. Um, I'm going to try to keep them all under an hour long because Instagram doesn't let me upload any episodes over an hour, and my stream yard does not let me stream any um, streams over an hour. They want me to upgrade to the bigger plan, and it don't make no sense for me to upgrade just yet because I'm still in the building process of this podcast. Um, I probably still got a year to go before I need to fully, fully upgrade and whatnot. We'll probably upgrade the camera, you know, halfway to the year before we upgrade um, our streaming software and whatnot. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, episode 113. Peace, and I'm out.